A very good morning to all present here. The world is full of diamonds and gems and we are having today one of them, Professor S.S. Loda, to build this event. And a very warm and hearty welcome to our chief guest and the main speaker of the day, Professor S.S. Loda, our guide, Professor P.K. Jain, Director MBA, Dr. Vikas Mishra, Director Gates, Ms. Shruti Agarwal, wife of Ankit Agarwal, CEO of Kitanjali Education Society, Mr. B. L. Jangir, finance controller and distinguished faculty members, delegates and all the faculty and staff members of the Kitanjali Institute of Technical Studies. Today, we all have gathered under a common roof to trigger a one-day seminar on developing faculty profile. So, on an auspicious note, now I shall invite Professor S.S. Loda, Professor P.K. Jain, Ms. Shruti Agarwal Ma'am, Dr. Vikas Mishra, Mr. V.L. Jangi to light the lamp before Ma Saraswati to inaugurate the event. Now I request Dr. Vikas Mishra to welcome Professor S.S. Loda with a floral welcome. to welcome Ms. Shruti Agarwal ma'am with a floral welcome. Thank you sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at the helm of its gifts machinery, it's our director, Professor Vikash Mishra sir, marshalling the resources. So can I have the pleasure of inviting Dr. Vikas Mishra, Director Gates, to deliver his welcome speech. Good morning, everybody. Honorable, respected Sri S.S. Loda, sir who has been our source of inspiration since very long and we are always very blessed twice in a year at least to have gracious presence of sir to our campus and we always feel cherished, enlightened and blessed to listen the thoughts, the experience, the learnings of Florida sir, honorable respected PK Jain sir, respected Shruti Agwal ma'am, my faculty colleagues, participating faculties from the other colleges of Udaipur. On behalf of GITS, I welcome you all in a very beautiful rainy season to the campus of GITS. And as it has been very rightly pointed out and put forward the preamble of the topic, the developing faculty profile, we all are going to witness a great learning a great sharing of 
words of huge wisdom from Loda Sahib. Since what I can see, probably almost 99% of, almost we can say the entire house is full with faculties. So, the topic itself is very relevant, which has been taken up by MBA department and as a, as a faculty, once we are into this profile, this is not, personally what I believe, it's not a job, it's a services to the mankind, it's a services to the nation. So, whenever any individual decides to make a career into faculty as a teacher, if we talk about it. So it's a services to the mankind. It's a services to the society, to the nation. So we all are in a role of nation builder. So first and foremost thing, if it comes to my mind, then if we are into faculty profile, we should be passionate. Until unless that passion is not there, it will be really tough to become a good teacher. And a teacher has to be a role model, where our students can derive that inspiration, that feeling of self-respect or that feeling of respect. And it's very rightly being said that respect is earned cannot command and in today's era of globalization, in today's era where we are living in a very free open society, we cannot expect that somebody will be, we can force somebody to respect us. Until unless we are not leading by example, until unless we are not becoming that role model where our faculty, where our students, where our disciples can draw inspiration from us, it is really tough. So. Passion, I always put at a very top of the skill set of faculty profile. And then ability to learn. Every day we have to learn. Whenever we, it's a 24-7 job. It's a 24-7 service. It's not an 8-hour service of going into corporate or going into shop floor, factory. We have worked for 8-10 hours and we are done. As a faculty, we are all sweating, we are all preparing our lectures for taking a lecture of one hour. Every faculty is dedicating a time of minimum two hours, two to three hours. Only then we are going well prepared in the class. And if we are not doing that thing, then certainly we are doing injustice to our profile. What I believe that whenever as a faculty I see myself, and primarily we all are faculties, I always say in public meeting, in one-to-one -one private conversation also, being a director, dean, these are all ornamental things. Primarily, we will remain teacher till our last breath. That tag, nobody can take away from all of us, but we have to prove worthy. And one such example is sitting in front of us in form of Lodasa, form of Jain sir, those who have led their life by example, where they have rise to that occasion where they are a source of inspiration, a source of light to all of us, to young faculties, to those who aspire to become a good faculty. And one very important thing which I believe, that the day when our student gets that confidence that I can ask anything with my faculty, that is also one of the parameters of a good faculty. Where our student ko हम पे ये यकीन हो कि हम सर से या मैम से कुछ भी पूछ सकते हैं। That is a success to us. We have it's a very both side. There can be two narrative or two sides of the thing of the coin. Somebody might say it's very easy to win heart. Somebody might say it's very difficult to win heart. But it's very easy to win heart. Just we need to be a little bit of more empath. We should have that quality of empathy or sahanbhuti, jahan pe hum sense of belongingness. In a way, we take care of our kids. In a way, we take care of our son or our daughter, jo humare biological child sen. In a same way, if we, if we develop a sense of belongingness with our student, then I'm sure the student will also be reciprocating with the same way. And it's a, it's a 
reversible process. It's a both side process. But primarily, since we are elder, we are more mature than our student. Primarily, it is our job to move two, three, four step more closer to our student, where we can win their heart, where the student can have that confidence that I can discuss, I can share whatever academic problems I am having if there are certain and today is an era of counselling also it's not just that we are there at class deliver kiya, register ban kiya or bahar nikal gaya if that mentorship is there so that being a mentor if I am aware about the happenings what the student is going through what are the various phase transformation which our students are going then certainly it is going to help and these are few of the things which comes into mind also one of the very important thing which I believe that the spirit of saying no never dies spirit as a faculty we should always be very proactive and we should have that desire we should have that faith in ourselves that we cannot fail time and again I give you we used to give, I used to give an example that whenever a child is small जब वो क्रॉल करता है घुटने के सारे, in the process of crawling and the first time when that child is standing, at least minimum two, three, four thousand time that child used to fall, खड़ा होने की कोशिश कम से कम वो दो हजार, तीन हजार, चार हजार बार गिरता होगा, but as a parent we mentor that child, we mentor that son or daughter in that process of getting standing up. And when that child stands first time, तो वो जो उसके चेहरे पे जो smile आती है, जो laugh आती है, जो clapping होती है, जो उसके body gestures होते हैं, that is that can't be compared in terms of in any no dollar, no pound, no euro can buy that happiness. So in if in that passion, if we faculty can strive with our students, no student is कोई भी student कमजोर नहीं होता है, just a mindset. It just we have to connect with the mindset of our student. If that student is not able to understand, then if we innovate, if we are proactive, if we can connect to our students ki humko usko us cheez ko samjhana hai, certainly we will succeed. So that spirit should always be very important. We can talk much long, but I will not take extra further time. We are here to listen. Loda sahab, so I thank you once again, all of you for coming here for this session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We look forward to a very absorbing session as it kicks in. Development of faculty profile has been a major challenge in the present academic scenario. The student-centric learning and keeping the motivation level of the students high in the classroom has become a topmost agenda in the minds of academic think tanks. So, may I invite our torchbearer, our inspiration of light, seminar director, Department of Management, Professor P.K. Jain, to introduce the theme of this seminar. Sir, please. Chief guest of the program, <coughs> Professor S. Sluda, Professor Vikas Mishra, Shruti Mem, distinguished faculty members and delegates. I am highly thankful to Professor S. Sluda because whenever he comes and whenever we make a simple request, he really concedes our request. And at this age, sometimes the person himself becomes the inspiration. And at this age, I think. Professor Loda is the glaring example. It's a real testimony of how a particular person, beyond going to the age and other factors, he can remain active for the life. This is, this is a real testimony of how in, in the Indian part of the Friends, during 1970s, Professor Pradeep Khandwala was the director of I am Ahmedabad. And he wrote a very good book about the faculty profiles of the Indian universities. And I was reading that particular book 20 years ago. 
he made a very apt remark in it, at the page of 38, he said, all the universities and academic institutions in India, they have become centers for the mediocres. Some people may agree, some people may not agree. But the most important aspect is, and, and why he has mentioned this particular aspect, he said that only 5% of the persons, they are joining the universities out of passion. Remaining 95% of the people, they are joining out of the job compulsions. And the most important aspect is that if you are not doing any particular job out of passion, you cannot apply your soul into that particular job. And unless and until you do not apply your soul, you can turn as a bread or an object, but you cannot become a good teacher also. Assessing the value of your own profession, it depends upon you. Art ni value kitni karwati society mein, yaha pa depend kata hai. Is why I remember one very important incident of my life, just thinking, mujhe aap yaha change kar diya. 30 years back, I was invited in Allahabad University to deliver a lecture. After the lecture, Honorable Vice Chancellor told me that Dr. Jain is your first visit to Allahabad University and this particular university is very prominent in the world. I will do a junior lecture with you, so I will give you all the university. So I said, okay sir. So a new girl, 24-25 years ago, she joined the university in 2 years. She told me all the faculties. Suddenly, when she went to law faculty, she said, sir, sir, this is the camera where Gorakhpuri has also been in class. So I said, okay, Gorakhpuri has also been in class. Then I said, okay, this is the podium. He said, this is the podium where Firaq Sahib had a class. Then he went a little bit further. He said, this is the camera where he had a class with the child Sahib. So, out of curiosity, I had a very casual remark. I said, when the child Sahib and Firaq Gorakhpuri Sahib were teachers, who was the vice chancellor? He heard the answer to that question. He was sitting in the faculty and people were sitting in the faculty. If you were sitting in the faculty, he would say, he would say, he would say, he would say, Sir, Vice Chancellor is coming and coming, but Firaz Khan and Bachchan Sahib are coming and 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 coming. This is the example of the faculty profile. When you can't do your own value, when you can't develop your own value, you can't develop your own value. I've said many times that if I'm a professor, I can't do my own class, I can't do my own class, I can't do my own students are justice and on the other side of my college peon is very clean for my company so for the society that peon is more important than the job of the people and so when you come here today is 20 years ago 15 years ago when you come here you come here and you come here and you come here and you come here second class and you come here 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 I know how to come down to the level of the students. And the biggest quality of a particular teacher is that you can't go to the level of the students. And if you cannot go up to the level of the students, sometimes the problem is that we are so egocentric in our wisdom that we do not want to go up to the level of that particular student. And wherever you are, you have all your wisdom, all your things, all your things, all your things. And another important thing is, they think you. So, I know 20-25 teachers with this. They were excellent teachers. And when they were excellent teachers, they got so many opportunities in politics, in poetry, in journalism. Now, you can see, Firaq Sahib and Gowada Singer, two teachers, one of them went to the poetry. Raja Indori Sahib, the poem leader, 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 Jadavur University is a professor in Jadavur University in English. The important thing is, if you can become excellent in your own profession, then other avenues can also be open. And if you are not in your profession, if you are not prominent, then there is no other way. Because the only lecture is that there is nothing in your life. And that's why we say that inside out person, until you have your observation, until you don't have your good job, until you can see everything and analyze it. They say that, Society's expectations are much more than you. Being a professor itself is the ultimate honor. Ultimate honor. Neeraj, when he was a teacher, he was the first child of his life. He never said anything about it. He said, 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 he said
शब्द रूप है काव्य कि आपकी आत्मा कितनी अपने की आप चाहे लेखन और टीचिंग कुछ भी हो आत्मा के सौंदर्य का शब्द रूप है काव्य मानव होना भाग्य है कवि होना सौभाग्य जब कवि हो जब कवि चाहे लेखक हो चाहे टीचर हो अगर इसे आप आई सोल तो सब कुछ पॉसिबल है और अगर आप अपनी सोल तो पाई नहीं कर रहे तो उसके बाद आप चाहे किसी भी किसी भी तरह से रहें और इसीलिए कहते हैं कि जब तक तब आप देखिए इफ इफ डोंट हैव एनी इनोवेटिव आइडिया और टीचर के लिए कहते हैं सौ साल आए दो सौ साल आगे की सोचना चाहिए दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी टैक्सी कंपनी उबर है और उबर के पास खुद की एक भी टैक्सी नहीं और ये पेंसिल के नाम यूनिवर्सिटी में प्रोफेसर थे उन्होंने आइडिया दिया उबर के मालिक को कि बेटा इस तरह का काम था इसमें टैक्स भी लगेगा दुनिया सबसे बड़ा टैक्सी मालिक हो जाएगा इट इट वॉज इनोवेटिव आइडिया ऑफ ए पर्टिकुलर पर्सन और दूसरी तरफ फेल किससे होते हैं आज के बीस साल पहले कोडक वर्ल्ड लीडर था सामाके नाइन्टी परसेंट जो फोटो पर गया फोटो का जो पेपर होता था उसका था वो आज इंसॉलमेंट हो गए और दस साल बाद ये सारी सारी गाड़ियाँ नाइन्टी परसेंट रेट के साथ हैं आउटडेटेड हो जाएंगे वो तो आउटडेटेड होंगे सोंगे वो पूरा पूरा अरब वर्ल्ड आउटडेटेड हो जाएंगे इस चक्कर में सो माई माई डियर फ्रेंड्स द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इसकी प्रोसेस इज डाइज द ड्रॉस पीर नॉट ओनली फॉर अस फॉर द एंटायर अमेरिकन एकेडमिक वर्ल्ड ऑल्सो एंड वी आर हाईली इंडेटेड टू हिम फॉर कंसिडिंग टू आवर रिक्वेस्ट एंड लास्टली माई ऑल फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स आई एम हाईली इंडेटेड माई द फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स हाईली कमिटेड हाईली सिंसियर फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स रियली आई एम इंडेटेड विद एंड इज ऑनली बिकॉज ऑफ सी एफर्ट्स ऑफ माई फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स कि कल शाम को पाँच बजे हमने हमारे यहाँ एम बी ए के एडमिशन क्लोज कर दिए वेहली इंस्टीट्यूट है राजस्थान में वेहली इंस्टीट्यूट राजस्थान में जिसने इतने शॉर्टेस्ट पॉसिबल टाइम में हमने एडमिशन क्लोज किए ऑल द क्रेडिट गोस माई सिंह से पहले बस थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you, sir. Your words have weight and power to stir and shake us. It takes courage to push yourself to the places that you have never been before, to test your limits, to break through the barriers, to punch the envelope and chart the new territories. So, ladies and gentlemen, this seminar is all about breaking breaking our barriers, and we have Professor Sham S. Loda, Professor of Marketing and Global Business at Southern Connecticut State University, New Haven, USA, since 1983. He has been a chairperson of the Department of Marketing School of Business at this university for almost 30 years until 2016. He had he had his education in India and USA. Dr. Loda began his academic career at University of Jodhpur in 1958. After serving for 16 years at University of Jodhpur, presently J N V S University, he joined Indian Institute of Technology, New Delhi, as an associate professor in the Department of Management. In 1983 he moved to the United States to join Southern Connecticut State University. Dr. Loda has also taught at the University for University of Hartford, University of New Haven, Quinnipiac. His research interests are international marketing, global business topics, service marketing and management education. So, can I have the honor of having him at the podium to enlighten us with his wisdom of words? Please sir. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I am so enlightened and, and feel so humiliated, humiliated, humiliating that you have invited me, and particularly with all the faculty. I am not here to teach anything because we all are so learned, and uh, you are making a great contribution. But first of all, let me express my gratitude to Professor Jain, who has been very kind to invite me, Professor Mishra Sir for speaking so highly about me, and our youngest leader. Who is going to enlighten you all of you, Jyoti Agarwal, and your other friends? Well, friends, uh, we all are faculty. I'm not here to give you any lecture. I'm not going to teach you anything. It is just sharing of some ideas. Uh, and uh, whatever I wanted to tell, I think Professor Mishra Sir has taken a lot of uh, I mean, efforts to make everything clear. So I don't think that I have anything else to add. Well, we faculty are really the pioneers of the new world, and our our country is really looking forward to the education because education is the wheel which moves everything. And I'm sure that under the new profile as we have set, 
that there was a time when the faculty's role was primarily teaching, go to the class, finish the lecture, and come back. But as we are seeing that our role is expanding, our expectations are expanding, and faculty is much more is to be uh, counted upon and much more to be expected to contribute to the society. So which I will be talking to you today only on those issues. So first of all is that teaching. Well, we know that teaching is wonderful, but new philosophy has to be developed. The whole philosophy is helping the students. Our, the students come to the university to make their career, not to break their career. There was a time if you had a problem, that is your problem. Today, if you have problems, it is the problems of the faculty. And we should go to any extent to help our students. So the new philosophy is that we should not punish the students, we should not affect the students, but try to work as much possible as possible. Uh, I remember my about two, 55 years ago when I went for my MBA to United States in Michigan University. And I was not feeling well in the beginning. And I could not take the exam. I was so afraid that, well, I will be failing the first semester where I will go. Then I met the teacher and my students, my colleagues advised me that if you talk to the teacher, he said, whenever you are ready for the exam, please come. First time I realized that teacher could be that kind of liberal, that kind of supportive. So my first request is that in our profile, we should feel that we are not the masters of the universe. We are here to help our students. So as much as possible, we should try to be as cooperative, as supportive, as helpful as possible. The other thing is that our teaching is have three roles to play. One is impact, another is engagement, and third is innovation. Well, the world is changing rapidly. There was a time when 19th century was 20th century, means yesterday was today, and today will be tomorrow. We are living in a completely new world. Whatever we do, what is its impact on the students, on the institution, and in the neighboring area? If our teaching has no impact, like students are still loitering, students are still making those kinds of things which they should not do it, people are not being benefited, it is being reflected on us that we are not doing our job. Our teaching should have an impact on the quality of the environment in which we are living. The other part is that uh, engagement. How do we engage ourselves? Teaching is not only a lecture. Teaching is that how do we contribute to the society? Because now everything is to be seen in terms of the society. What kind of impact we create on the society, that is very important. If you have read in the, I was, uh, in the United States, I was reading in a local newspaper that at Fuller Station, because in this scorching heat and 50 degrees temperatures, centigrade temperatures and the water scarcity, in Fuller some teachers took the initiative and they took the help of the students and local organizations and they supplied to the passengers cold water in a shift of every four hours or six hours. I mean, there is so much to be done. I mean, there is, the needs are unlimited. And I would say that whether we can go beyond our institution and create some kind of engagement with the society. So now you are, uh, what I am saying here is that faculty's role is really expanding. And I don't know where it will stop. It looks like unlimited. The another part is innovation. Well, as we have been seeing, and uh, Mrs. Jyoti Agarwal is here. And that's why I say that now, as I was just talking in the hall, I mean, in the Dr. Mishra's office, that old is no more old. <laughs> we have not to learn from the older people because their ideas were wonderful when they were introduced. But in the changing times, which is rapidly changing, our ideas will certainly not deliver what is expected of the new world. And therefore, it is important that we always think of new ideas, new roles, new models, new aspirations and ask ourselves, in the last two years, have we changed our teaching philosophy? Did we add anything new to the syllabus? world is changing. Our limitations are not the course contents. As a teacher, we have to introduce those kinds of elements which will make our students very competitive because we are preparing them for the modern world. Modern world is changing rapidly. I mean, whether we recognize or not, 
question is if we don't make ourselves ready for those, our students will not be able to compete in this world of today. They expect a lot of new ideas. And our teachers, we have to see that what we did two years ago is not relevant for two years from now. And constantly things are changing. We have to have new kinds of philosophy of teaching, new kinds of assignments, new kind of learning skills. Everything has to constantly change. I give you a small, a small example. Well, even in America, it's the students are students. They don't want to study. There are so many part-time jobs. And they just want C plus A, B grade, B plus grade. That's all. That is their whole objective. So when you give them assignments, they really work hard, work very hard. What I did is that I said, OK, whatever your chapters are, whatever we are covering, you will prepare a review of the chapters. And then that's not enough. You have to give me an outcome, learning outcomes. What did you learn from my lecture, from the PowerPoints, and from the chapters? That will force them to read and to develop their own initiative that what, just like you go to a movie and then close your eyes and say, what did you see in that movie? What things impressed you? And I felt that that was very good. I was just teaching a course in services marketing in the summer. And when I gave that assignment, I first time I realized that how much students are getting involved and all that. So what I'm saying here is that our profile should include what kind of innovations we are uh, we are introducing. It has to be done very updated because we cannot live on yesterday. Tomorrow has to be completely different. Another part is that in teaching, we are teaching <coughs> hard skills. Means the course, if you are teaching finance, then you are teaching finance things. That's not enough. The employers are today they look to your degree, that's okay. That may be 40%, 50%, maybe even 60%. But what about the remaining 40%? And the remaining 40% is soft skills. I mean, do we prepare our students besides the course to teach them anything? Soft skills are, I mean, like, like a gratitude, sense of gratitude. If you are working in a place and if you don't express your thanks or gratitude, we are not going to cover a long distance. People will expect, because now we realize that how we can get the best out of the people is express them gratitude. There are books and books on gratitude you can see on Google. So who will teach us? So we have to prepare our students on the soft skills. Kindness, sense of loyalty, compassion, tolerance, humility, and being generous. These are the qualities which teachers have to show them into the classroom, into their actions, and make them feel that they are part of this. Soft skills are really missing. And that's why you are seeing lots of things which are happening in the environment and in the society. It's because the students do have a degree, but they are not a human being. And if we have those kinds of skills, they will certainly be very, very relevant to the society. Another part is social skills. Now we are part of the society. What happens in the society affects all of us how we can make a difference in the social structure. Say for like, I was reading in the just today's paper about global warming. Now you know it's what a great concern. Every part of the world is being affected. And are our students being conscious? Sustainability. I mean, these are the kinds of things which our students should be participating in those kinds of activities. Besides your course curriculum. Course curriculum is important, I would say. Maybe we can say, 80%. But what about the remaining 20%? That 20% becomes 80% if we are not prepared. So in my opinion, that is very important. Another is leadership skills. Everyone is a leader. Leader means who takes the initiative. We should expect that our students, there must be programs, they should be arranged, where the students get the initiative in creating some kind of thing. They are not just coming to the class and gossiping and talking and making all other kinds of nonsense things. Let them be thinking that they can, each of them can contribute anything, anything and everything, whatever is the society is needed. Then another thing is that our, our all reputation, the teachers, you know that, rate your own professor.com. Now teach students know that they can impact your prestige. They can impact your career. They can impact your future. And therefore, it is very important that every faculty member should know 
that whatever is their duties, they are just confined to the room and nobody else will know. The whole world will know about you and what you are. And then easily, I mean, the students are talking, I mean, looking at the kinds of, what kind of professor? And in many universities, even the universities are not about, universities are, I mean, the consumer reports are there. So we all are now in the open environment. We are living in a glass house where everybody knows it. So please can be very careful that it should be a part where your prestige is not being damaged. Another part is that we always evaluate students. We always keep them on the toes. What about us? Teaching evaluations. I mean, I would say in America it is a routine, but nobody takes care. Seriously. It's not that America is everything. Well, America is the world's uh, biggest economy, then. there is no doubt about it, most prosperous economy. But point is that uh, there are many things which are missing here. I would say that let us introduce teachers' evaluation. Every class, there, whether teachers are teaching, what students want to learn, are they learning? Are we, do, we, do we have a feedback from the students what they are, we are being taught? And it is, therefore, it is very important that uh, the new kind of perspective is that our faculty should try to add that we should do those kinds of revelations. The another part which I would like to say that faculty and students, the most important person on the campus is a student. We are here because of students. Our livelihood is dependent on the students. Earlier we thought we were in the seller's market, as you understand. Means people will come to us and we can treat them the way we like. If they don't like, get out. It's a new world. Students have suddenly become very important. Why? Because they have many options. If you are not good, they can go to another institution. If that institution is not good, they can go to another institution. When I did my first MCOM, I remember, there was only one university in the whole state, rather than university. There was only one college where I could go in Udaipur, where I could do my MCOM. Today, you know how many options are there. So therefore, I would say that the, every faculty should play a role, key role, in student satisfaction. We should ensure that there is not even a 1% margin where students are dissatisfied. We have to be constantly on our toes as a faculty that where the kinds of things are like there is saying that before this before the fire there is a smoke. We can always anticipate. We have to be proactive as Professor Mishra Sabas mentioned. He talked a lot of wonderful things which I am not covering, but we have to be very proactive and that is very important. Another part is that we have to create a friendly environment. I remember when I became a lecturer at the age of 19 and a half, I went to my principal professor, Saxon Knife, and told people my novel. Keep a distance from the students, don't joke with them, don't mix up with them, don't do all. I mean, keep a profile that you are 100 miles apart from them and so that they respect you. That was the feeling for us. No, absolutely. Now we have to create a very, very friendly environment. Where students are part of you, you should talk to them, you should know about their culture, you should know about their social background, you should know about their economic background, as well as you should know about their concerns. Every student is important. Just like in a big balloon, if you make a small needle hole, the whole balloon will collapse. Any student can make a difference on the campus life. And therefore it is important that know the background of the students. Faculty should come in contact. It's not teaching only which is important. We have to know a lot of things about the students. The other is this treating students with humanity. Remember, students are first a kind of consumers, not in the marketing sense. That if they are, they want 80% uh, grade, give them 80% grade. I mean, give them what they want. No, that's not. But consumers in a sense that they expect, they know their rights and privileges. And we have to make sure that they remain satisfied. Then another the point is that we are operating in an entitled society. Entitled society means as we were talking about in the hall. Suddenly we realize that each one of us is a king and a queen. We all have our rights and privileges without realizing our duties. We all expect everything. Why not? Why trends are late? Why there is no water? 
Why there is not electricity? Why this is not happening? Why teacher is not coming to the class? Why building is not properly maintained? He explained that. It is an entitled society. And because of it, then the students have abundant expectations. They are not just coming to the class and getting the degree. In fact, we have to be constantly in research that what are the new needs which the students are expecting from the faculty, from the institution. And therefore, I would say that we should try to be more cautious. It's not a very big work. Just only that instead of wasting our time, we spend one more minute in finding out what are the kinds of things which are causing concern to the students. If we do that, that will be certainly a very important aspect of our survival. Then as Professor Mishra Sahib has uh, mentioned about the advising, student engagement or monitoring as we say, it's very important. The students are here to come make their career. They cannot be left alone to do what they like. Because they don't know, they have to be provided all kinds of guidance. It is our responsibility. And therefore I would say, the advising has become a very, very important factor. And for that, teachers have to be very well knowledgeable, and they should know that each student has their own areas of expertise, their concern, their limitations, their strengths, their weaknesses, whatever it is. And accordingly, we can have, Indeed, don't go for that kind of course. It will not help you. Why don't you take this? Your certificate diploma will be all right. You do this, you do that. Advising has become certainly very important. So my uh, suggestion is that faculty has to also take a role in advising the, uh, in advising the students as best as we can. Well, in America, we have an advisement policy. In fact, uh, uh, much of the time is being spent now on advising because advising has become a very critical aspect of our education. So I'm sure those kinds of things will be looked into. Then, as Dr. Mishra has explained, oh my God, he has gone much far than what I could have given here. But faculty should work in a role model. Like I remember a small story. Uh, father got up in the midnight and he saw the light in the sun screen. He went there. He was smoking the Morana cigarette something. He said, where did you learn? The child politely said, I learned from you. Faculty, what kind of our profile is on the campus? What kind of dress we put on? How we talk to the people? How we talk to peers? How we talk to students? How we talk to the secretaries? Faculty are, how we are disciplined? How we are punctual? How we keep promise? How we show kindness? How we show empathy? Faculty is important. Like we could say that if parents, husband and wife, if they live very peacefully, very respectfully each other, children will learn that. They are all silently watch, watching everything. Same thing is about our institution. And therefore, it is very, very important that faculty assumes that their role is not only to go to the class and come back. They are being observed constantly. That is where the learning takes place. If they talk to you respectfully, if they are very, very honest people, they are very committed people. I'm sure the students are very well. No, very well. My teacher has said it will be done. What kind of business educate we teach them? Professionalism. These all kinds of things I would say the faculty has to have besides teaching. Teaching is a nowadays in my opinion, teaching is a very small part of the total package which we are we were giving them. In fact, teachers are only facilitated. We don't spoon feeding you anymore. We are teaching with adult students. They know what is to be done, what is to be done. But we have to prepare a whole person for the most demanding world. It's an entitled world. People expectation, as I said, are growing. And first it is growing with the students. Their demands are growing. So I would say faculty as a role model has to be really very, very critical, so we should be very careful what kind of dress we put on, how we eat in the cafeteria, how we talk, everything is being observed. Faculty becomes a good role model. Another part is faculty development. Well, we know that 
we are all Nardak people and uh, once we learned something, once we had a PhD or we had our degree, our job is to throw books in the corner and then you go and walk into the class of hospital. Absolutely. Particularly, I would say that faculty and in business and in uh, engineering side, there should be, in my opinion, faculty internship should be the regular part. Maybe every two years, faculty are sent for a month or two to see what the world is changing. And there is no academic and uh, industry partnership in the real sense of students. I mean, many industries feel that the students who are coming to their job, they are highly fit for the job. Because what we teach in the class and what is expected of the workplace, there is no balance. And therefore, it is very important that we should do. And the third part, which I would say, that we must have a great seeking collaboration with the industry and with the uh, academics, because they should be a very important part. Well, I know if these things are happening, but there is a need for doing more and more. The another part is, Faculty are brand ambassadors. Means an institution is known by the faculty, not by the building. Of course, you have a wonderful building, wonderful infrastructure, but that's not enough. If you visit Harvard versus MIT, Harvard has very old buildings. But what a kind of reputation they have. And where the reputation has come from, not from buildings. People residing inside the building. Every professor who is being hired, each one is unique, each one has a lot of contributions to make. In fact, they are the ambassadors. And I would say only that uh, each one of us should, because God is very kind. Each one has some unique quality, some unique strength, just recognizing where you are placed. And try to play on that. Maybe you are a wonderful teacher, then try to do as best so you are known that, oh, Gitaji Institute, oh, here is a professor who teaches. We have to create some kind of our impact on the outer world. Maybe locally, regionally, nationally, and even internationally. It is very important that we create those kinds of things. So identify your qualities, identify your uniqueness. Each faculty should determine from today that I will make this institute known. Oh, here is a professor who is very helpful, who is very good organizer, who is doing a lot of leadership activities, who is doing this. I mean, it's very important that our faculty does. So specialize in those kinds of things. And these areas could be teaching, it could be research, it could be publications, it could be community related some things. But faculty should not be just known within the institution. They should become a brand ambassador. In fact, the uh, City University of New York, I was recently seeing when I was just about to come to my, uh, India. In New York Times, they published in whole things, our faculty. They printed the photographs of the young faculty and older faculty all. And each faculty's profile was given that what kind of things they had. Means each faculty is creating city university of New York. So I would say from today, each one of you should try to see that how you can make a distinction and make a place that people, institution is known by your contribution. You cannot remain a silent partner. You cannot remain an object. You have to be really very, very creative in doing your things. Then the other part, I mean, the other, other aspects are that building relationships. Well, <clears throat> today's students will be tomorrow's alumni. You see, the IITs in America, they have a great relationships. And they organize functions and all those. In America, people know here from IIT. Well, it is important that we work on the, the they are the unpaid advertisers. The students come because of what they will say. Word of mouth is very, very powerful than the advertisement which you put in. So I would say that it, building relationship is very, very important. And for that, how students can be involved? 
creates so many activities. I will give you a small example of uh, Agra where I went, not this time in December, where two professors came forward and they took the auto rickshaws people and they made them learn the etiquettes and how to treat the customers and how to talk about it and all those kinds of things. And they have made a really great impact in Agra city that tourist comes and how they are being treated. So my, my uh, submission is that involve students. Students' job is not only to come to the class and go home. They should feel a part of the institution. They are so, just like in your home, you are so busy. How many things do you take care of them? Institution becomes your second home, rather first home. And there you develop those all kinds of relationships where faculty, all the time you are thinking of making the institution a great. When you do this, they develop a sense of belongingness, a sense of loyalty, a sense of commitment, and that makes say all kinds of things. Another part is make faculty become more generous. Talk people you don't mind. Try to help. They are your children. They are part of your body. You are there. They are the part of your existence. And therefore, if we do all those kinds of things, I'm sure the faculty will be creating a kind of impact where students will continue. And because these students, your institution will become an alma mater. And in that alma mater, if we can create and if we can, I mean, nurture it, I'm sure things will happen. So in nutshell, I would say that uh, faculty profile has to be revamped. Faculty profile has to be expanded. Pro faculty profile has to be revisited. It is not just teaching, just not teaching. Even research, even teaching. Well, they, well uh, there was a time, and even today, the best institutions where they hire the best faculty, they are based on the research. No more. People are asking that whatever you are teaching, it should be your research should be very responsible. So make sure that whatever things, small things which I have taught, they are not great. They are very easy to copy. Then they are very easy to adopt. If we can do all those kinds of things, I'm sure your profile will go much more. And you are not only benefiting your institution, your students, and the whole country will be benefited. And that is what we are. Because we owe our responsibility. The human species is the only species on, the, on this planet which needs learning. Otherwise, any, we don't have instincts. Like animals, nobody wants them to learn anything. They learn by themselves. But we have to learn everything. And therefore, as a faculty member, make sure that every part of learning, we are here to make a whole person, not just a deal in the hand. They don't come just for it. They come here as to become a whole person who will make their career and who will make their life and who will contribute to the society and make the whole country as a whole great. So that's my small submission. Uh, I'm not teaching you anything. You are all professors like me. And uh, all I know, what else I can say is that I'm so grateful that you have come here to listen to me, though there was nothing to learn more. But these are the small things which are part of it. I have only re-emphasized what I have done. You know everything. You are doing it. But the whole point is he can do it with, you, with more emphasis, with more determination, with more uh, efforts that we will make a difference. Faculty is just not teaching. Faculty is a total development of the students and total development of the institution by, by which they are born. Today Harvard or Yale or they become popular not just because of teaching also. They have created so much impact on the society, impact, engagement, and innovation, that the whole world is talking on those kinds of issues. Once again, thank you very much for inviting me and I you. Thank you so much, sir, for your words that driven by, driven by values and powered by intellect. 
Having drunk the nectar of his experience and valued thoughts, we the members of Kitanjali can't have enough of it. We are humbled and graviated by the dollops of wisdom that our guests from USA have so graciously bestowed on us. Memento of affection and remembrance would by no means embody whole of our spirits, but we hope it's worth a token of our feelings on behalf of management department kids. Now I request Dr. Narendra Parivar to present a memento as a token of remembrance to Professor S.S. Lora sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we had the nuggets of knowledge and wisdom flying off from the center of the stage for the last three hours. Isn't it time to thank these visitors? dignitaries and reverend speaker. So, I invite Dr. Dharmesh Modwani to propose a vote of thanks on our behalf. A very good morning to all the dignitaries sitting in front of the dais. On the behalf of Department of Management Studies, as well as the Department of Mechanical Engineering, I, Dr. Dharmesh Motwani, after conveying thanks to Almighty God, my sincere thanks to Ms. Shruti Agarwal, the CEO of Gitanjali Education Society, Director MBA Professor B.K. Jain Sir, and the Director Gates Professor Vikas Mishra Sir to providing us this opportunity to organize this one-day international seminar on developing faculty profile. This seminar could not be completed without the words of Professor S.S. Loda Sir. As Mishra Sir and Jain Sir has already conveyed that he is very kind enough that whenever we extend our invitation to him, he accept our invitation as well as visited our institute from last three years twice every time. And this time, this is the first visit and we, are, we would be expecting your next visit soon, sir. The words which you expressed today clearly enlightened us that how we could be a good faculty. He explained us that what could be the various features, what could be the various qualities which we should, which we should inculcate in us so that we can get a good reputation in front of the teachers as well as in front of the students. A program could not be completed without the support of my faculty colleagues. So I convey my special thanks to all the faculty members of Department of Management Studies as well as the Department of Mechanical Engineering. My special thanks to all the participants who have visited Gitanjali and spared their time to make this event successful. I would like to convey my special thanks to Mr. Mohit Goswami who wholeheartedly invited all the faculty members of University College of Commerce and Management Studies. Last but not the least, my thanks for, to the audience to be patient and I am expecting this presence in the upcoming programs also. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Now I request everyone for the national anthem.
Thank you. And I request everyone to please collect the certificate from here only. The participants who have come from outside Ketanjali, from Commerce College. Thank you.